السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ مائی فیلو برادرز سسٹرز لیڈیز اینڈ جینٹل مین ایز یو کین سی آن دا اسکرین آئی اسٹمبلڈ اپ آن دس ویری پرسسٹنٹ آئیڈیا دیٹ ہیز بین ان سائڈ مائی مائنڈ فار اے لانگ ٹائم نا آئی ٹرولی بلیو دیٹ وی آر وٹ وی بلیو اینڈ دیٹ برنگس می ٹو پاسبلی دی موسٹ امپارٹنٹ ویڈیو آئی ول ایور میک ان مائی لائف the episode on faith or iman under the seeking the truth main series why do i say we are what we believe because for example i want to paint a picture to you from my life i have certain beliefs that my father gave me he gave me at a very early age that in the way he did things he showed to me that god exists and that god is helping him that god is supporting him He didn't explicitly say this to me, but he was always thanking God and he was always talking about God. And in that sense, after all of the challenges that he has gone through, I realized that he firmly believes that and that belief came from him to me. He also gave me certain other beliefs. Like he told me that I can do anything that I put my mind to. He also told me that I must be a hard worker. if not the hardest he also very importantly something i love about my dad taught me that i have to be honest and straightforward in my nature he gave me the belief that i have to always earn righteously that i have to earn in a halal way no matter how many opportunities come to me in forms to make money in a haram way never take it and that has driven my life he taught me very importantly and i hope when he watches this he'll probably get mad because this is not on top but he taught me that health is wealth he was always telling me arogya paramalabha that is in singhala something that loosely translates to health it is wealth and he very explicitly informs me even today and even to my brother to my mother to my wife he keeps telling us all that we should never harm our body he is a very clean person he is always clean he taught me to be clean always very very clean in fact when he you know sometimes we go and you know have a loose wash right just wash our hands and face you should see my dad he does a really super cleaning up for something that we sometimes define as you know no i i had a face wash i washed my face no no he does a near body wash whenever he cleans up is a super clean person and he taught me that money is important but not more than my conscience not more than what is in my heart and these are beliefs that i drew from my father that have made my that have shaped my life and because i was driven to believe these things from a very young age that came to me from my dad these embodied me this made me who i am this is what i am and my mother the beliefs that i drew from my mother some of the very important things the way she raised me and my siblings my sister my brother is that she showed us that god exists and that god is watching over us so we had this notion that you know there is god and and we have to be or live in a certain way because god is watching over us my mother taught me that education is the most important thing i could possess therefore i have had a certain affinity to education in the way i look at education and why i am so associated to the education industry this is coming from my mom she taught me my mother my dear dear beautiful mother she taught me that knowledge is very powerful and she raised me in a way that i acquired knowledge that drove me in time toward intelligence as well and my mother gave me something very crucial that has helped me a lot throughout my entire life she taught me that reading and writing completed the man so since at a since a, an early age i was reading a lot i i had books lying around me all the time i was reading a lot it was a very important habit to me i could not sleep without a book to that extent you know i was a, i was a reader 
and he got me to write write essays write articles write books so one of the biggest parts in my life i was not a nerd trust me i was never in class but i've made books like making books was a big part of my childhood she also gave me this idea that i have to be multi skilled and because of that the way i grew up especially in school and in uh, various other uh, institutes wherever i went i was always engaged with multiple avenues uh, because of this nature that i was driven from my mom to be multi skilled and my mom is somewhat of a ocd when it comes to being organized and i have that quality i am organized in all that i do i mean i'm quite uh, there is a certain name i've a reputation i've built around my organization if you ask uh, nazmi who is my best friend he'll tell you how obsessed i am with being organized and my mom taught me that i have to be kind especially to strangers for people who we don't know because sometimes she's mean to us right so sometimes i think okay we can be mean to the people we love and you know we can like tell something in a stern manner but to strangers but to people who are beyond that scope she was always kind and kindness was a very important part of my life especially when it comes to other people and that has helped me a lot in my teaching career because when i'm teaching with stu- teaching students and mentees and learners and trainees i'm able to use this beautiful value my mom gave me and my mom in her example taught me that i have to be graceful and dignified in my ways in my way of life these are the beliefs i draw from my mother this is what i am we are what we believe i say this i stress on this there is another source of beliefs i have in my life kingswood my school and one of the most important beliefs i drew from kingswood is the college motto so kingswood's motto is to live by faith and virtue and when i entered college in grade 6 right um, i didn't really understand the full meaning and as i grew up every year it felt like i understood a little bit more about what blase meant when he said we have to live by faith and virtue and thankfully it coincided with the first pillar of islam that i was taught the first pillar of islam is also faith and it coincided perfectly kingswood's motto says be faithful islam says be faithful so my religion and my school connected there and the kingswood song in its entirety was a very important part of my life i believed it in grade 6 when we entered when i entered the college um after scholarship exam agnes winter mrs agnes winter my class teacher at the time she made us memorize the kingswood song and she told us that this school song was written by the founder and i took it very seriously so for me the meaning was very important and every day in the morning we used to sing and every line i used to believe it and it it has shaped me uh to who i am and some of the lines while i am not going to pitch you some all the lines some of my favorite lines from the kingswood song as you can see here one it says loyally manfully all of us true to thee that is to kingswood so i learned loyalty and i learned that as gentlemen we have to be manful <laughs> the second line here none for himself but all for the school so sacrifice and selflessness was taught to me from the kingswood song that is coming through my founder none for himself but all for the school i mean it really had a significant impact i was always saying it out loud and i was making decisions during my college life driven by this line a lot and i look at my peers who now i understand that why they did the things they did was because this line was not as serious to them as it is for me in fact some of my friends have made fun of me uh, as to why i am so serious about kingswood why i am a die hard uh, loyal fan of kingswood right uh, the third line is beautiful here blaze writes duty we dare not flee heavy the cost may be so my dad also taught me this my kingswood song also kind of reiterated it in my mind imprinted it in my mind if you have a duty never flee heavy the cost may be even if you have to give up everything perform your duty duty first 
shoulder to shoulder, disdaining to shirk. Brotherhood. Another very beautiful line that very nicely connects with Islam. Because in Islam, when we pray, we pray shoulder to shoulder. And for me, the first time I read this song, it connected so deeply to me because I was thinking, all right, my school is telling me shoulder to shoulder. My religion is telling me to pray shoulder to shoulder. Brotherhood was so important. So in college, for me, no matter what I went through, no matter what challenge I went through, for me, every Kingswoodian to this date, whichever era he belongs to, is a brother. Brotherhood. And my school also taught me a lot about what I could expect from the society. That I cannot expect everyone and ev anyone to understand me. That people can be evil or two-faced or hurtful. I've been hurt a lot. But I, was, I learned during college itself to take it, to bear it. I, I made some tough decisions during those days. Because I was always mingled with serious responsibilities. And I had to take this. I had to bear this. And Kingswood also taught me that life is not fair. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that Kingswood taught me this. And one of the most important traits that my school gave me is that society is diverse and it can be kind, also cruel. It taught me a reality about society. So these beliefs coming from my beautiful mother, my father, and my parents. Right, as you can see here, that's my mom, my dad, and me wearing the college tie, uh, the blue and maroon, on the Kingswood stage. These three sources were a big part of what taught me, what gave me my beliefs, and what ultimately turned me to who I am today. And that is why I say that when I look at life, I realize that as children, what we see, what we are told, and what we believe has profound impact in the rest of our lives. What we hear, what we see, it has a significant impact. This is why I say that as parents or teachers, we must be very careful, very, very careful. If you are a parent or if you are a teacher, you will, if you are not, you will become someday. Remember this. You must be very careful of what we show and exemplify and tell our children, our younger generation, because when they believe you, that belief shapes them to become who they are. This is very important. And that is why I consider myself to be very fortunate because in 2010, God, in my opinion, granted me the opportunity to leave home. I left home to join the University of Columbia to do my bachelor's in physics. This is how I looked back in the day. And 10 years later, I come full circle. I return home. I come back home looking like this or, you know, what you see me you see here. But these 10 years were a test of faith, test of beliefs. All those things I told you, I showed to you now from my mom, from my dad. From my college, they were put to test in actual society. I was working, I was in the corporate sector, I was doing teaching, training, I was meeting so many people, I started a few businesses, some of them like poof, gone. I had gone through betrayals, I had lost money, I had lost investments, I had lost friends, I made new friends, so many things. It, this was like a complete package of testing my faith. And here I am, now, today, trying to talk to you about faith in my Seeking the Truth main series. In my life, after all of these things, after all those faiths, the beliefs that came to me and then testing them, I observed that people generally in society have faith in various things. Now I want you to ask yourself, look at this list and see if are these things that you have faith in. I've seen people have faith in their self. Like that's a big thing, right? Nowadays, motivation, uh, all of these conversations that go on, all of the self-help books, you know, have faith in yourself. You know, you can, you are the one, you, 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 you. That, that idea, right? Insta, all these, you know, influencers do this a lot. It's all about promoting yourself. 
I've seen people have faith in money. That's like a big deal, right? Like money. Some people think that if they have money, they have everything and they can do anything. Right? And with the secularist or the economic nature, the capitalist economy we have, it sounds true. It looks true only until it's not. Other people, some people have faith in other people, family, friends. For a long time in my life, I had faith in friends. My friends never let me down or rarely let me down. So we have faith in our other people as well. Health and physical strength. Some people have, you know, it's, it's my body, my health is might or, um, you know, you, you use your health as a means of justifying power. Some people have faith in hard work. You know, some people, there are YouTubers who talk about hard work a lot. You know, you work, you work. Grinding is the only way to get there. Some people talk about education and knowledge. Some about technology. Some have faith in technology, you know, like really. They have in the devices, in the hardware, in the software, artificial intelligence, um, cryptocurrency. They have faith in those. Some people have faith in government. And like if you look at our society locally here in Sri Lanka, a lot of people have faith in democracy, that democracy would not fail it. It's a, a democratic republic, this country. So a lot of people who had faith in democracy put that system in place. Now, then I'm asking you, aren't we what we believe? When you really think about this, think about your childhood. Think about the test of that faith. Think about who you are today or who you are becoming. Aren't you what we believe? Or aren't you what you believed, what you were led to believe? And how does Islam connect to this idea? That's what I want to touch on. Islam has five pillars. And the first one out of the five pillars, it's Iman, Faith, Salah, Zakat, Saum and Hajj. Those are the five pillars. Now the first one, very it's very curious, you know, the first one is faith. So the important question I ask myself is faith in what? What do you have faith in? Okay, Islam says have faith. Faith in what? Now when I ask this question, Islam very clearly says, firstly, you need to have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La ilaha illallah. There is no God but Allah. It is very clear, very specific about this. In fact, I quote from Sahih Muslim, the book of faith from the prophetic tradition. It is narrated on the authority of Abdul Muttalib. That messenger said, he has found the test of faith or Iman who is content with Allah as his Lord, with Islam as his religion, code of life, and with Muhammad وسلم, as his prophet. So if you have found faith, it means by Islam, the definition, is your content with Allah as your boss, as your Lord, Islam as your code of life, as the way you live, and with Muhammad as the messenger. But when you look at these things, you know, the own self, money, other people, right? Because it's it's a little bit of contrast, right? You know, you you have these things in real life and you can have faith. If you have money, you know, you can solve certain problems. If you have good health, you think you're invincible. If you work hard, you think you can get somewhere. With all of this, one thing I realized is that everyone and everything that you see in this list fails us. I have had faith in all of these things. I have had faith in money. Money failed me. I have had faith in myself. I have failed myself. I have had faith in my parents, my friends. They have failed me at some point. Not deliberate, but they failed me. And I have failed them, people who have had faith in me. At some point, because of some reason, because of some circumstance, I haven't been there when they expected me to be there. I have failed other people. Education, knowledge, you know, however many labels you have. I have seen countless people, the labels can't do anything. I have seen countless people with the labels, but only the labels and unable to get anything done. Now, if everything and anything can fail us, what I realized is that why Islam says that you have to have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and foremost is because Allah doesn't fail you. That is the idea. But I want to be very clear. In Islam, it's not that simple. 
faith is not that simple. In Islam, faith is a very, very deep concept. So much so that in the book of faith of Sahih Muslim, it is narrated on the authority of Abu Huraira, one of the companions, that Prophet said, faith has over 70 or 60 branches. That is how deep Islam is. That is how serious Islam is about its first pillar. The most excellent of which of the 60 branches or 70 branches, the most excellent of which is the declaration that there is no God but Allah. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. And the humblest, the last, the most simplest branch of faith, of which is the removal of what is injurious from the path. If there is a stone in the road, and if you remove it, if a Muslim removes it, if a believer removes it, removes an obstruction from the road, that is also a branch of faith. This is how deep Islam considers or Islam studies and Islam presents the idea of faith. And it says Al-Haya, modesty, is also a branch of faith. If you are a modest person, it means you have faith. You are a faithful person. I want to take this a little further. Now, I said, right? According to tradition, faith or Iman has over 60 to 70 branches according to the Sunnah. I want to highlight a few points because these are important as Muslims and as non-Muslims. If you are watching this, you have to understand that this is what faith means to us. A faithful person, these are the qualities, right? Some of the qualities is has love for the migrant. If there is a migrant, if you have a neighbor who came from a different country, different village, you have love toward that person. Wearing old clothes is a sign of faith. The one who is the best in manners, this is prophetic tradition, okay? And I have all of the tradition uh, included here, but I can't show it to you uh, because of the way I've designed the presentation. But all of these are sourced from the Sunnah. The one who is the best in manners is the most perfect believer. Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, the most perfect believer is the one who has the best in mannerism, not the one who prays five times, not the one who, you know, uh, gives zakat at the right time. No, it's the one who has the best mannerism, best conduct. Modesty is a branch of faith. And a faithful believer to another faithful believer is like the bricks of a wall enforcing the other. And the tradition says that Prophet, after he said this, he did this. I don't know exactly if it's this or this to show it. I think it's this. This is how a faithful person to another faithful person is. Because Islam is all about brotherhood. The Prophet wasallam said, None of you will have faith till he wishes for his Muslim brother what he likes for himself. The dua we ask for us, what we wish for ourselves. We are not a faithful person, we are not a faithful servant of Allah until we truly can wish that same thing to another, to another Muslim, to other Muslims, to the entire Ummah. And the messenger said, my dad, purification is half the Iman, being clean, not only physically, physically, spiritually, mentally, in all sense, in the entire sense of the word, purification is half the Iman. That is how deep Islam is about faith. Islam discusses faith. We have to study this. We have to understand this. The idea is that even if you are the worst person on the earth, if you have faith, if you have Iman, faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and foremost, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept you and protect you and may even change your qadr because only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can do that. Now the Quran, I want to touch on the holy book, the Quran. It is very specific here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides the believers saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created man and jinn only to serve him. So as men, we are here, we are put on earth, we have to remember something. The primary purpose, the only purpose that we are here is to serve Allah. This is a test by Allah. In his infinite knowledge and mercy, Allah granted us the test on earth, but didn't abandon us. That's what I love about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is so kind, so merciful, so beneficent, 
that he would create us, he would send us to earth and give us guidance through the revelation of the prophets. And in Islam, he says in the Quran that he perfected the religion for all humanity, for the entire species, for all time to come until the day of Qiyamah. He gives life and he takes it back. Ultimately, the only one that matters is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And from him we came and to him we go back. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. And we say in Suratul, in um, Ayatul Kurs, we say Allahu la ilaha huwa al hayyul kayyum. From him we came. Right? That he is the source. He is the source of everything. Everything you see, everything we are, is the source. We have to very deeply understand this. And I've touched on the commonsensical elements of how I understand the existence of God in the first episode. This, the understanding and the study of this, being true to the faith, is what makes the Muslim distinct. And why Islam, in my opinion, why Islam is tried to be persecuted in today's world. Why Islamophobia is so rampant and so serious a problem today in this world. Because the problem is caused when you have true believers, they pray, they give, they fast, they pilgrim. They are straightforward and honest. They fear judgment, yama. So in everything they do, the believers, they fear judgment. So they keep that in mind before they do something. They are modest and they, are wear, they even wear old clothes. They respect the migrant. They remove obstructions from the road. They are fair and just. They are trustworthy in their dealings. They control their anger and emotion, etc. Now, when you look at a person who has these qualities, who is supposed to be a true believer, now I'm not saying I am one of them. I'm saying a true believer has these qualities. Prophet Muhammad wasallam left this example to us, this amazing example, and his companions. Now, if you have people who have these qualities, the problem is in today's world, in the way the world is constructed today, the world is designed today, especially after modern capitalism, these qualities of a true believer makes it very difficult for the so-called powers of capital, media and weaponry to control a Muslim. Because that, those qualities will make the world peaceful. And peace today is a utopia. Peace doesn't make money. Peace is very calm very stable so peace might not be the best solution for so many people in the world for so many powers in the world and thus enters islamophobia the ultimate solution on life uh, for life on earth the perfected religion and the only way to paradise reached by Prof prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam established by the word of god the quran and the prophet sunnah becomes a feared and misunderstood religion and yet, one thing amazes me, I don't know how it's happening, against all of these worldly odds, it is the fastest growing religion in the world, with nearly 28% of the world's population being currently Muslim and followers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, followers of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, I want to be very clear, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, there is no compulsion in religion. Surah al-Baqarah. Chapter 2, verse 256. There is no compulsion. This is no compulsion. This is an insight into what Islam is. It is simply our duty to use the life given to us to think and ask ourselves the important questions. You know how I started this? I, asked, I started asking myself, why aren't you happy, Azman? For a long time in my life, I wasn't happy. I was doing all these things, I was meeting so many people, I was getting all these, you know, qualifications, money, trying to earn, trying to make a career. None of these things were making me happy. That's where a journey began for me. It's been a few years now. And here I am. If you're a believer, my ask, the action I'm requesting is, if you're a believer, explore your faith. Strengthen it. Because there is a limit to everything in the world except Iman. You can have no limit to your Iman. You can have 
your iman strong in an unlimited sense. But if you are not of the faith, if you are a non-believer at the moment, my objective is not to compel you toward Islam. My objective is to ask, to push you to ask yourself, what do you truly want to believe in? What is it that you truly want to believe in? If you start asking that question, a lot of other questions are going to pop up. And then you start answering those. Then, hopefully, things will start to become clearer and clearer. And I can help you if you write to me. In summary, we are what we believe. I showed to you, my mother, my father, Kingswood. These sources gave me certain beliefs and I became what they were. Therefore, what we believe is very critical. I remind you, if you are a parent, if you are a teacher, if you are a senior, if you are an elder brother, what you give your younger siblings, those of them who are especially between ages of 3 to 12, 3 to 15, you must be very careful in what you tell them. Is If they believe you, that's it for life. It's very difficult to break something, uh, you know, change something, just reorganize a thought process after someone firmly believes it. That's why, you know, you scare people or you scare kids saying oh, ghosts exist. And if they believe it in their younger days, today there's a big market to scary, you know, horror movies. There are people who believe in ghosts. That's because somebody somewhere down the line, when they were young, put that in their mind, put that in their head. Choose what you believe very carefully because the rest of your life, here and after, depends on that. Because you and I may think in our arrogance, you know, because we are arrogant, right? We tend to be arrogant that we do not need to worry or fear in our actions. I see that a lot, you know. A lot of people do things, we do things, I do things in, in an arrogant way, forgetting that there's something, you know, that there's a supreme power. The messengers were one of their primary qualities and primary labels is they were warners. All the messengers, they were warners. They were sent to warn us. You know, to warn us of what? That judgment is coming. Truly, it is coming. Not the courts, not the law and order. The supreme judge, the one above everything else, Al Hakam himself is going to judge us all. So, consequence in everything, Newton's third law, every action has a reaction. We just don't know to what extent. Like, I might pick this pen from here. I have a pen, I pick it and I keep it here. There is a reaction to it. I just don't see it. Consequence is inevitable. I remind you again, judgment is coming. The Supreme Judge Himself will judge us all. So, beware what you believe because you truly become what you believe. You have to really think hard about this. I have to think hard about this. We all, I believe, have to think very, very hard about what we want to believe. With that note, I leave you. I hope that this has sparked a very important thought process in your mind, that you're thinking, am I what I believed? What do I believe? Are these right? Are these wrong? Should I change these things? Then, some, in some way, if at least one of you are able to achieve that, my purpose is served. Thank you so much for being part of the journey. Thank you so much for watching. May Allah bless you and all your loved ones. May Allah protect us. Assalamu alaikum. May peace and Allah's blessings be upon you and your loved ones. Thank you.